So let me begin by asking, you know, uh, uh, Piyush has already set the, uh, you know, uh, let's say the intro of this webinar. We are going to talk about uh, pre-thinking. Uh, rather than discussing what is pre-thinking, because I'm sure you guys have been reading up on it a lot. You've been uh, kind of even following pre-thinking based on a lot of guidance given to you in YouTubes and stuff like that. So uh, uh, we are not going to discuss what is pre-thinking. We are actually going to delve behind whether pre-thinking is really possible for most of you. And if not, why? And what can we do to help you really pre-think, you know, effectively pre-think? So let me ask you straight away. Uh, when you are solving CR questions and when you are trying to pre-think uh, the answers, uh, what problems are you facing? Okay, you can give me your answers in the chat box, guys. What is it that really kind of hampers, uh, when, you know, hinders you or hinders your thought process when you're trying to pre-think? What happens? What happens? What goes wrong? So let's hear it from you and then I'm going to take it forward. Then I'm going to show you what we uh, can, we, we can give you a framework where you can really pre-think effectively. So let's hear it from you guys that what is it uh, that, you know, uh, causes you problems when you're trying to pre-think. Where do you go wrong? What do you feel goes wrong? What do you feel you can't do? Okay, so Shaza, uh, welcome to the webinar. Shaza says, nothing comes to mind. Well, Shaza, I can completely sympathize with that. There are CR questions when you're completely clueless because the scenario is absolutely unfamiliar. Ritab says he simply can't connect to the ideas. Now, Ritab, today we are going to show you uh, a couple of frameworks which will really help you connect the dots in the given scenario. So, I am this webinar is really going to be helpful for you. Uh, Riddhi says basic pre-thinking which doesn't help reach the answer. So, I think what you mean, Riddhi, is like you're able to kind of uh, just think on the surface, but often you do not get to the deeper levels or which kind of match with the answers given. Mm, Ravi says data flows faster or is missing. Um, so, okay, Ravi, I think again, what you mean is you're not able to connect what data is given and what you're looking for. James says distractions. Okay, James. So I, I think I'm not going to ask you what kind of distractions, but uh, I understood. You are not able to pre-think along the required lines is I think what you mean. Shivani says, not able to comprehend three to four premises at once. Shivani, that's interesting. Okay. Often what happens is a lot of information is given. And in the given amount of time, we are kind of in a situation where we cannot process all the information together. Okay. So Shivani, that is where our methodology of reading the CR questions, you know, how to approach the CR questions will really help you. I'm going to show you that as well today while we are uh, looking at the pre-thinking framework. So just stay on with me, guys, because what we are going to discuss today might very well change your entire way of looking at um, CR questions, solving CR questions. Let's see. Uh, so Nandi says, not sure what to look for. Okay, that means you're, so Nandi, uh, this is exactly what I think most students feel. They feel clueless. Asha says, I spend too much time pre-thinking. All right, that's another question, right? Often when you cannot pre-think, you, you think, okay, what am I to do now? Should I straight away go to the answer choices or should I spend more time on pre-thinking? Latip says, after pre-thinking, the answer options come to near my pre-thinking idea. Okay, so Latip says at least two of the options are closed. Latip, if you have been pre-thinking along the right lines, uh, you will be able to eliminate one of those two so-called very close options. So we're going to talk about that as well today. Pratik says, unable to join the dots. Okay, Pratik, today's framework should help you do that. Manisha says, unable to draw the reasoning between the pre premise and conclusion, which means Manisha is saying that, uh, I don't know how to spot that logical gap. All right. Uh, Sai says, struggles coming up with right assumptions. Arpit says, gets blocked and jump to answer options. Yes, Arpit, that is again something that happens very commonly. Okay, uh, uh, while pre-thinking, you suddenly find that you are facing a mental block. You don't know in which direction to think and you therefore just go to the answer options to avoid wasting time. Aman says, he uh, sometimes I'm on the line of pre-thinking and it gets uh, me instant results and sometimes it is completely off. All right, Aman. And Manicha says, difficult to understand the stats with the reasoning of the author. Okay, so time says Saket. 
guest all of this so i think i've got a nice overview of all of us all of us we face almost similar problems okay either we're not able to process the information correctly we're not able to join the dots we're not able to think of what to think let me put it this way okay so in today's framework okay what what we have done in fact let me give you a little bit of heads up about uh, you know uh, uh, what we have, we are really going to talk about this the objective of developing certain frameworks which will help you free think you know was because of these problems that free thinkers face you feel clueless sometimes you end up thinking in the wrong direction you spend time you spend energy and finally when you uh, what happens is either you're not able to think of anything at all or you come up with some sort of half baked or incorrect assumptions and then what you do is you land up choosing the incorrect choice as the answer all right so we 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 are, through our research we and through our uh, you know interaction with students we have identified this happens and the solution to all of this was to prepare a kind of framework a kind of let's put it this way a formula of sorts which can help you pre think more efficiently and effectively so when i say more efficiently and effectively i'm actually telling you that i'm going to give you certain guidelines which will tell you in which direction to think do you think that's going to really be, uh, you know uh, help you guys yes do you believe if i gave you the direction in which to think that would help you think more effectively yes i mean just think about it if you had pointers all right uh, saket shivani manisha aman uh, nandi think like this think in this direction do you think that would help you that would right i'm sure that would so in today's class in today's class we are going to look at uh, a couple of frameworks we at gmat wiz we've gone through uh, the various kinds of gmat cr questions and we have identified some typical types of questions you know where these frameworks can really be helpful now right at the outset let me tell you guys that when i'm going to discuss these frameworks today i'm going to use simple examples all right so please do not feel that this is such a simple question why are we even discussing it the point of that question the first of those questions we will bring up some difficult questions as well the point of those simple questions will be to help you understand how to use the framework okay so you got to be patient there if you really want uh, a framework that's going to really be the mantra for success in cr all right so uh, let's first therefore understand what are these four typical types also understand they are not the only types but these are the most common construction types okay so cr uh, in gmat cr has a lot of these questions where you have uh, the, uh, you know assumptions trend then we can evaluate questions where often you find that you have questions you know based on plan goal now what are these questions in these questions you usually have some plan with a specified goal given to you and there are some details about the plan which are given and uh, the conclusion is usually either about the success or the failure of the plan and you've got to either identify the assumption behind the plan or if for a strength in the plan you've got to weaken the plan you've got to evaluate the success or failure of the plan and so on and so forth so i'm sure a lot of you will be able to recall that oh yes we've kind of come across these plan goal questions in a, the, uh, you know somebody wants to do something in order to do something typical language so this is one of the most common construction types and today we will discuss how to use a framework to solve such questions so hold on to that thought the other most common type is causality based uh, 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 constructions again in these what is given to you is there is a causality in uh, you know in the conclusion of the argument that is uh, there is a cause and effect relationship that is pointed out in the conclusion of the argument okay and uh, you have to identify whether it is you know this is the cause or this is not the cause you know strengthen the causality weaken the causality very few questions on identify the assumption behind the causality but then uh, most of the time it is strengthen weaken and evaluate questions once again strengthen and weaken form the major chunk of your cr questions so very very important there so we to, in today's session we are going to discuss these two types of frameworks all right the other two you'll have to sign up with us to get more details about those 
um, the time does not really permit that we can discuss all four frameworks. But let me mention them. So you have the comparison based questions where the construction, the question typically has two scenarios, you know, uh, the scenario can be, let's say two methods, it can be two segments of people, it can be two practices, it can be two uh, explanations, it can be two alternatives. Okay, and a comparison is drawn between these two scenarios. And often, but not always, the advantage of one scenario is discovered, uh, is discussed over the other, comparisons are drawn, and conclusions are uh, uh, set up. So you sometimes have to strengthen these conclusions or weaken them or evaluate them and so on. And finally, there is a small percentage of quant-based questions. Such questions require you to kind of, uh, uh, you know, uh, they are based on small quantitative calculations, not really testing your quant uh, uh, ability, let's put it this way, but testing your understanding of profits and percentages and ratios. In fact, sometimes you, a single question may be, you know, it may contain a plan goal question which has some quantitative uh, calculations or you can have question uh, where two plans are being compared, you know, so and so on and so forth. So once again, let me iterate that I'm going to discuss the first of the two frameworks today, most commonly used. And I'm sure if you had a framework for those, you would really, really be able to save time and score high on accuracy. So before I discuss the plan, what I, here's what I want you to do. Okay, first we will discuss. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to solve this question. Once again, let me tell you, it's a simple question. One of the easier questions that you can expect on GMAT. I want you to solve it the way you solve it now, okay? And then I'm going to show you how to solve this using a framework, how that framework works. So I'm going to give you exactly a minute and a half for this question, it's really simple. So get going guys. Okay, you have 10 more seconds. I'm going to count uh, five. And if you haven't marked your answers, please mark the answers quickly. So five, four, three, two, and one. I'm going to end the poll. Okay, here goes. All right. I'm sure uh, this is Shivam. Yes, this is a this is an easy question. And as I established earlier, the purpose of introducing an easy question was that I would be able to explain how the framework uses effectively, so that the same framework you can use for more difficult questions. All right. So do not go by the difficulty level of the question. The aim of the question was not to teach you how to solve this question. The aim is to, um, you know, uh, uh, demonstrate the framework. Is that okay, all of you? So as the polls reveal, 75% of you have marked D as the correct answer. Then you've got a small 6% who have marked A, 12% who have marked B, uh, none for C, and 6% uh, for E, all right? so. It's very obvious that D should be ideally the answer, but we've got to still look at why that 6%, 12% still marked the other choices. Where did you go wrong in your pre-thinking? See, the aim, uh, uh, my motive, okay, our motive in setting up this framework was to help all of you, the weakest of you, the strongest of you. So please bear, okay, please bear with us and try to understand the framework rather than the question. The next question that comes up is going to be a 700 plus level question. All right, so here's how the framework will work. While explaining the framework, guys, 
you might uh, uh, there might be certain doubts that arise in your mind so just hold on to that doubt till the end of my explanation when you can put forward, forward those doubts and i'll be really happy to answer them the other thing is uh, make notes okay so if you are if you don't have your pen and paper ready bring it uh, get ready make notes note down the framework so that you can use that framework when you're solving plan goal questions next all right uh, the other thing is uh, that uh, what was I going to say? I kind of quite forgot. All right, they'll come back to me, I'm sure. So here is, ah, uh, yes, I was going to tell you guys that uh, when earlier on, you were also telling me that it is very difficult to process a lot of information together. So I'm also going to follow the, uh, uh, the meaning-based approach that we follow when reading the stimulus. So pay attention to how I'm breaking up the stimulus and reading uh, the stimulus, how I am processing all the information together, how I'm weaving together information, all right? So that is also going to be very important when you're trying to use the framework. The framework works only, you know, the framework works, and this is what I was going to tell you next. The framework works only if you have read and understood the argument properly. If you have not understood the argument, you will not be able to employ the framework. So the basic guide to understanding or using the framework is to understand the stimulus thoroughly, all right? So this framework you have to apply when you are pre-thinking. That is after you have analyzed the stimulus. So here's our stimulus, okay? And the first step here will be to analyze the stimulus. So let's get going. Again, as I said earlier, I want you guys to pay close attention to how I am analyzing the stimulus. All right, so let's read the first sentence. In order to, now the moment you read this in order to, uh, what you get to understand, what you should try to understand is, okay, clearly here we are going to talk about some motive, you know, some goal. In order to protect their rice crops from devastation by pests, so with the motive of protecting the rice crops from being destroyed by pests, the farmers of Lethoso, so we have the farmers of Lethoso who are trying to protect their rice crops, they have decided to introduce a species of black ant. So the first sentence is a premise, okay? And it presents a plan and a goal. Uh, all right, sorry, I'm so sorry. The premise which presents a plan and a goal, okay? Uh, let's look at the second sentence. Research conducted on the ants says that these ants secrete liquids that are absorbed by the soil and helps the plant to ward off the pests that year after year of the yield. Now, long sentence actually. So here the second sentence is telling us, again, it sets a premise. It's telling us that uh, there is a third party finding, the research finding. And what is this finding? Uh, it, it talks about the mechanism of the plan. How will the plan work? Uh, it explains the plan will actually work against the pests. And then it also tells us that the pests reduce yields by half year after year. Based on this second premise, we have the conclusion, therefore, okay, the farmers are expecting full yields in the coming season. All right, so all in all, what do we have? We are told that there is a plan the farmers of Lethoso have come up, all right? They want to save their crops from being destroyed by the pests. So they are going to bring in black ants. These black ants are going to give out some liquids the liquid will be absorbed by the soil and that is how the plants will be helped to drive away the pests. And we have also been given that these pests really uh, bring down the yields to half. They really cause significant damage. And finally, the conclusion is the farmers are expecting full yields in the coming season. So the question now here is what have the farmers assumed while devising the plan? So clearly, we have to identify the assumption behind the conclusion, which is basically the outcome of a successful, of the success of the plan. Okay, if the plan is successful, then only the farmers can expect full yields in the coming season. So this is how you have to thoroughly understand the stimulus, okay? The stimulus, you have to be in and out familiar with every aspect of the stimulus. Now, here comes the framework guide. Okay, during the prayer, so now that we have established that it's a plan and goal framework, a plan and goal type of question, so you can think of putting in the 
framework. Whenever you are analyzing a question and you realize there is a plan and goal out there and uh, ideas to un understand things about the plan and the goal, you can put in the framework. Okay. The first step is to identify the exact plan. Now, a lot of you might think, what does this mean? Sometimes, and especially for difficult questions, okay, there might not be clarity about what the plan is. There might be a long sentence which contains the plan, but the exact plan is just about three, four words. So you've got to be very concise. You've got to, if you, if you want, you can jot down the plan in a short phrase, you know, especially if you're during the, during the learning phase. So the first step in the framework is identify the exact plan. In this case, the exact plan is to introduce a species of black ants, right? That's the plan. Next step will be to identify the exact goal. What is the goal in this case? Okay, again, you might uh, uh, say that, okay, well, why do we need to exactly identify the goal? Well, over here, for example, if you think that the goal is to increase the profits, you might go wrong in, uh, you, know, you know, you might think in the wrong direction. So you have to be very precise about what the goal is. Sometimes we make assumptions, okay? The goal is very precisely here to protect rice crops from destruction. The goal is not to increase the profits. The goal is not to cut costs. The goal is nothing else but protect crops from devastation. Okay, so be very precise about the goal. Okay, the goal here is to protect rice crops from pests. All right. Now, the third portion is very important. Now, I want you to note down these three guidelines. The first guideline is, what happened during the planning stage? Now, this is the direction in which you have to think. Okay, this is the direction in which you have to think. What is given about the plan? Plan is the black ants will secrete liquids. Okay. All right. So, now you've got to think about the steps that are taken to formulate the plan. The steps. And then you can think about some factor that would impact the goal. Some unknown factor, some unknown, you know, uh, thing that escaped during the planning stage, something that the author forgot to think about to figure it into the plan uh, while the planning was being conducted. And that could be some factor that would impact the goal because that has not been figured into the plan. In this case, for example, the plan is based on the findings of the research, right? The findings, uh, according to the research, it says the secre uh, secretions will help the plants, okay? But what if this third party finding is not correct? You know, third party findings is up and open for debate. We know that. So what if uh, the findings of the research are not correct? In that case, the black ants may not be effective. All right. So uh, in that case, the conclusion will break down. You know, the yields may not be full. Therefore, the first assumption that the author has made while planning is that the research findings are accurate and will work as expected so the direction in which you are thinking is what was what kind of inputs went into the planning stage notice you are already given that research has says, said this so all you need to think about is whether that research is correct or not whether the research is accurate or not you know the basis on which the plan was so to speak planned whether that basis is correct or not so you think in that direction so the first first guideline in which you know in the direction in which you've got to think is what happened during the planning stage okay now the next step the next guideline is to think what happened during the execution carrying out of the stage all right now the the plan has not yet been carried out remember but you can think about the steps that are given to execute the plan okay so and then you can think about some adverse impact of the plan outcome of the plan something not thought you know something that the author did not think would happen think of some some that some sort of adverse effect of that plan for example in this case uh, the farmers have just decided to introduce the black ants based on the research outcome okay so there is no information about uh, the black ants themselves except that they secrete liquids we can still think so we can think along those lines what if the plant the, the black ants are in some way you know, kind of harmful, okay? Uh, one effect of the black ants is that they secrete liquids. What if there are some other effects that could actually uh, harm the plants? Uh, so let's think about those. 
what about the alternate effects what if the black ants start eating the plants we don't know what the black ants feed on okay what if the black ants start feeding on the plants then again the eels would be devastated so the farmers have assumed here that the black ants themselves will not feed on the plants right so that's the other assumption made if the black ants themselves start feeding on the plants then although they might ward off the pest then the plant would still be harmed Okay, so see how we have been able to come up with two assumptions very quickly just by thinking up in the right direction. What happened during the planning stage? What happened when the plan was carried out or will be carried out? Continuing in that line, what if the plants absorb the liquid secreted by ants and that liquid reduced the plant yields? So the liquid was able to kill the black ants. Okay, the liquid was able to kill the black ants, but the liquid also killed the plants. Again, the eels would be devastated. So the farmers have assumed that the liquid secretions of the black ants will not cause any harm to the crops, okay, so as to reduce the eels. So the secretions will not be harmful to the plants. That is an assumption made, okay. All right, so three assumptions so far. Can you count that? So first guideline, what happened when the plan was being made, okay? What happened when the plan was carried out? Finally. You can think of any other connection between the plan and the goal. I mean, connecting the dots. For example, in this case, you can try to think of a missing link that is necessary for connecting the plan to the goal. For example, in this case, uh, it is necessary that uh, for what is necessary for the plants, you know, uh, there to be full yields. What is necessary? So any piece of information which is necessary for connecting the dots, but has not been given, that must have been assumed. For example, in this case, the farmers are expecting full yields this season, okay? What if there are other things that go wrong? Okay, the black ants are going to drive away the pest, but what if other things start going wrong? Okay, then also the yields will not be full. So, here the author has assumed, you know, say for example, some weather condition causes damage to the crops. So, then the farmers cannot expect a full yield anymore. So the farmers have assumed that nothing else is going to cause any harm to the crops to reduce the yields. All right. So you can see by following these three guidelines, okay. All right. By following these three guidelines, you can come up with uh, n number of assumptions, multiple exam assumptions in a small matter of time. Can you see that, guys? Were you able to follow the framework? You can answer me in the chat, guys. How did you find the framework? All right. While applying the framework, all you need to do is remember what is given. Okay. So when you are thinking of following the first guideline, that is what happened during the planning stage. Think about what is given about the plan. Okay. So here the research and the finding of the research. Then execution stage. So think about what what might happen after the plan is put into effect. Think about adverse impacts, all right? Similarly, finally, you could think about the missing thing. So in the, the, you need not put all the three guidelines into effect all the time. Thank you, Asha. Asha says it's amazing. Yes, Asha, it really works. I myself have tried it out so many times uh, while solving some really difficult questions. And this gives me a very you know streamlined thinking. I don't go this way and that way. I don't lose track of what I'm supposed to think about. And it really helps for difficult questions. We will see when I bring up the next question for all of you. What about the others? I want to uh, I want to get a, a kind of you know. So Trikun says he he's understood it. Srimiti says she's understood it. Parvez, Shivani, Vishnu, great guys. I hope you're able to use this, and it's really effective. So that was the motive of using uh, a simple question to show you the guidelines, how they can use. All right. Yes, Latif, thank you. Um, it is useful. So let's now see how we are going to eliminate the answer choices. Most of you already know the answer. You have got the answer right. Let's see. So with those four assumptions in mind, let's bring up one question at a time. The yields this coming season will fetch higher profits than expected by the farmers. Now, the conclusion is concerned with the full yield. As I said here, the plan is not about increasing profits as such. Although you might uh, think that if the yields are going to increase, the profits will also increase. 
but though that might very well be so the given stimulus doesn't really talk about the profits therefore higher profits is totally out of scope and is therefore incorrect the secretions now some of you mark this as the correct answer the secretions of the black ants add nitrogen to the soil which helps in promoting the growth of the rice grains now this choice supports the plan but it is not a must be true condition if it promotes the growth then the farmers can expect a full yields but does this have to be true sorry does this have to be true ask yourself an assumption is something that has to be true does it have to be true that the blank uh, black ants add nitrogen to the soil even if they don't add nitrogen then also the growth of the rice grains might take place okay because the pests will not be uh, harming the yields so you can try the negation technique when we are negating we must always negate the main verb so the secretions of the black ants do not add nitrogen to the soil which helps in promoting the growth of rice grains all right so even if no nitrogen is added to the soil by the secretions uh, still the yield can be expected to be more because the pests are going to be killed therefore this con uh, the conclusion doesn't break all this choice does is it's a it strengthens the kind of conclusion but it does not it's not an assumption and those of you who mark choice b my question is to all of you who marked uh, b you are are you clear okay so 12% of you marked b all right uh, are you clear why b is not the correct answer choice so shivam says the strenner shivani says yes shivani so rohan says he has understood the framework but initially it may take some time to get acquainted with so rohan write down the framework a couple of times look at the written notes and then follow the framework and in those questions it will take you a little more time but then once you get the hang of the you you are acquainted with the framework it will become intuitive thank you sambit um yes uh, hima i'm going to give you that question very soon uh so sai is saying the goal is to protect the rice from pests but how to arrive at the assumption of weather effect so uh sai the the simple thing is think about the goal and think about the conclusion the conclusion is full yields are expected so apart from the pests what else is required for the full yields obviously all other conditions weather rain soil etc etc so that is how you arrive at that assumption is that clear sai these are crops okay so what else is required to fulfill uh, to bring about a full you know uh, yield of crops so rita negation technique is simply taking an answer choice which you think might be the correct assumption and looking at the logical opposite of that all right so that's a different discussion altogether and uh, for that uh, we don't really have the time right now as you can see we are just negating the choice choice b is saying they add nitrogen and in the negation technique we are just taking the logical opposite of that choice we are saying they won't add nitrogen so even if they don't add nitrogen the conclusion is not impacted if the answer choice was correct and if we negated that answer choice then the conclusion would break down all right okay so let me move forward uh, with choice c black ants are herbivores that means they eat plants and are known to have a voracious appetite that means they have a huge appetite they they eat a lot now this choice actually indicates suggests that the black ants might eat away the rice plants this is a weakener therefore definitely it's not the correct answer choice so nobody chose this choice d rice plants are not vulnerable to the leaked secretions of the black ants and this is absolutely along the lines of assumption 3 sorry that is written assumption 4 there so it should be uh 3 okay the farmers have assumed that the liquid secretions of the black ants will not cause any harm to the crops so in this case it's a simple question that therefore it is simple to devise this answer but for the next question uh, you will see how the framework really helps okay the choice d is the correct answer and 75% of you got that right Choice E again a small six percent of you had marked this. The farmers have decided to go for pest resistant variety of seeds in the coming season. Okay, now does this have to be true for the conclusion to be true? The farmers are already 
uh, introducing black ants to control the pests okay so this choice actually tries to tell you that farmers probably don't have faith in the black ants and therefore they are now going to use a uh, pest resistant variety also to ensure full yields so again if you look at this choice uh, you know it, it's the opposite of the intention of the paragraph at best it could strengthen the plan that okay apart from using the black ants they're also going to use a uh, pest resistant variety so perhaps the uh, uh, there'll be better yields but then again this is not a must be true condition and therefore it is not the correct answer choice okay all right so how many of you are excited yes ryan the answer is d how do you negate uh, d okay so i'll just quickly show you that uh, let's just go back to d if you negate d if you say the rice plants are vulnerable okay are vulnerable you take the logical opposite of are not vulnerable you have to always negate you negate the main verb always okay so the main verb here is are not so therefore you cut out that not and you say the rice plants are vulnerable to the liquid secretions of the plant black plants if the rice plants are vulnerable then the rice plants are going to get affected and then then the farmers they cannot expect full yields all right and therefore our conclusion would break down and that is why choice d is the correct answer so ryan i hope you got that right you got that all right okay guys how many of you all are excited for the next question excited to put uh, into effect uh, you know put into effect this framework <clears throat> let's see how many of you all are excited you are raring to use this framework i have put up a poll you can answer in that poll oh my god so all of you uh, you are welcome ryan you are excited now i want you guys to strictly follow the framework okay please resist the temptation to not follow the framework then only you will be able to um, uh, identify whether the framework works or not so manisha is saying is it the assumption shouldn't be a new info so uh, no manisha assumption should be new information assumption should always be new information for example rice plants whether they are vulnerable or not vulnerable is not given in the passage so it is definitely new information okay an assumption cannot be something which is already mentioned in the paragraph an assumption cannot be something that you can actually infer from the paragraph all right clear manisha i hope that is clear so let me see uh, all of you are excited i've got a small percentage which says uh, is not uh, uh, excited to use a framework but i really hope you do it has helped me in some solving some really difficult questions okay now here is the question that side let me just bring up the question uh this is an official question okay it's a 700 plus level question i'm going to give you exactly 2 minutes get set and go okay so jot down the plan jot down the uh, 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 goal and then use the framework think along the three lines if you can even if you can think along two of the guidelines it should be good enough i'm going to mute myself
Okay, I can see that the polls have stabilized. All right. So uh, I'm going to leave the poll open for now, guys. Okay. Um, rather, I'm going to end the poll and then I'm going to give you a chance to um, think about this again once we have discussed the framework here. So, all right, let me end the poll. I'm just going to count five, five, four, three, two, and one. Okay, let me end the poll. Fine. All right, guys. So, as we can see, the results are <clears throat> kind of mostly divided between answer choice B and E, but let's see. So, none of you chose A. 40% of you have gone with B. 15% of you have gone C, gone with C. 9% of you have rooted for D and 34% of you have rooted for E. Okay, let me look at. Okay, so Ryan says he applied the framework in this question and found it helpful. Thank you, Ryan. It is going to really help, you know. Right now, you might find it that you have to refer to the framework again and again, but gradually it becomes very intuitive. Okay, a plan was made. These are the steps of the plan. So these are the things that the planners thought or did not think. Uh, the plan was carried out. These are the effects of the plan given. So what are the other effects that could have happened? Okay, this is how you think. All right, so let me ask you guys a question. How many of y'all? So let me just remember the, so there was a 40% in B, 15 for C, nine for D, and 34% for E, we will see whether this changes or not. Now, how many of y'all used the framework? And I really want you to be honest about this. How many of y'all use the framework? I'm not saying whether it was effective or not, but how many of y'all used it? Okay, all of y'all used it, good. My next, okay, so no, 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 all of y'all did not use it, let's see. It's still changing. Okay, so what I can see is about uh, 70, nearly 70%. Okay, so it's a uh, 65, 35 thing. 65 to 70% of you say you used it and some about 33% of you did not use it properly. Okay, all right. Now, those of you who used it, okay, did you find it helpful? Those of whom, those of you who used it, I'm talking about those of you who used it, did you find it gave a direction to your thinking? See, you may still have got the question wrong. It's quite possible. But did it give you a direction to think in, you know, instead of thinking in all sorts of directions, not being able to pre-think at all, did it give you a direction that, okay, I've got to think along these lines. All right, so a good chunk of you, about 80% of you say it did give you a direction. In case it did not give you a direction to think in, it means you have probably not understood the stimulus. As I said, for the framework to work, you must be very, very conversant, very you know clear with the stimulus. A lot of us, and please acknowledge this if it is true, a lot of us uh, do not really understand the stimulus properly. We believe, we just read it without understanding and we think that the, since the time is ticking by let's quickly go to the answer choice and we'll come back to understand the stimulus if you're doing this the framework cannot be used okay all right so that was almost 87 percent of you found the framework really useful okay so smriti says she formed a process to approach the question shivani says it brought a sense of clarity i'm so happy to hear shivani because I remember you saying that you, you found it difficult to process three and four people premises together. I'm so happy about that. So Ritab, uh, uh, follow, I'm going to discuss the framework again when I'm discussing this question. All right, so I hope you follow. Make notes if required. Note down the steps of the framework. All right, you'll need to use it multiple times. Vishnu says he tried but couldn't get through it. So Vishnu, we will help you uh, to find more clarity. It is, as I said, it's quite possible that perhaps you did not understand the stimulus properly. So I want you to listen carefully to the discussion. Just give me a moment, just a moment. Okay. 
So I'm going to just now, I am first going to analyze the stimulus. Okay, so pay close attention. 12 years ago and again five years ago. So we're talking about two periods in the past, twice in the past, 12 years back and five years back. Okay, what happened that those two times? There were extended periods. So there were long periods, both the times, 12 years back and five years back. When the Darfur Republic, so Darfur Republic is probably some country or something. When the Darfur Republic's currency, the Pundra, so we are saying in the past, twice there were periods when the Pundra was weak, the currency was weak. So the currency was weak 12 years ago, the currency was weak five years ago. All right. Okay. Clear on this? Understand this sentence because oftentimes if you have not understood this and if you have moved forward with your reading, then high chances that you will not be able to apply the framework, you will lose out on getting the correct answer. Even if you are not applying the framework, you will not get the correct answer because you did not understand the stimulus properly. Okay. So, uh, uh, understand what is happening here. 12 years ago and 5 years ago, twice in the past, the Pundra was weak. Now, what is the meaning of Pundra was weak is explained to you after the colon here. Notice this colon here. So, this colon is indicating that the expl explanation of Pundra was weak is going to come up. Its value, so it refers to Pundra. Pundra's value was unusually low relative to the world's most stable currency. So, when compared to uh, the other stable currencies of the world's countries, Pundra was weak in value, was lower in value, unusually lower. Okay. This happened twice. All right. So, uh, okay. Both times, so that means 12 years ago and 5 years ago, a weak Pundra made Darfur's manufactured products a bargain on world markets. What does this mean, guys? Pundra made Darfur's manufactured products a bargain on world markets. What does it mean? You can answer to me in the chat. Because if you haven't understood this, it is quite possible you went wrong in your pre-thinking. What does this mean? Weak Pundra made Darfur's manufactured products a bargain on world markets. What do you mean by made a bargain? Yes? What does it mean to say that Darfur's manufactured products were a bargain on the world market? So let me see your answers. Okay. Uh, Madhukar says it made uh, Darfur's manufactured products cheaper in the world market. Good, Madhukar. Uh, Ryan says more competitive. I believe, Ryan, what you mean is their prices were comparative with the other uh, countries. Vinny says cheaper products. Latif says cheaper in world market. Uh, Smithy says best price. Uh, well, if, if not best price, at least uh, definitely competitively priced cheaper price than the other products. Good, good, Smithy. Shivani also says cheaper. Samit says value of the manufactured products was lower. Madhukar says cheaper. More for less price, uh, says Shivam. Okay, Saksham says other countries were getting Pundra's product at cheap prices. Very good. Govindam says, weak currency made goods cheap. Very good. Krishna says, cheap products. Aman says, cheap to buy from, uh, uh, from Darfur than from other countries. Nikita also says, cheap. So all of you, Sachin, Govindam, Ritab, very good. Saurabh, Manisha, Sambit, Prachi, Rohan. Good. So this is very important as you will realize. Yes, Arpit, less than the competitor's price. So good that you have understood that. And I hope all of you stopped to think about this when you were analyzing the stimulus because if you did not high chances you went wrong anyways so what this choice is telling you that in the past twice the darfur's manufactured products became cheap on the world market and darfur's exports were up substantially so exports were increased substantially means by a huge amount now so so far we were talking about the past okay so far from here till here, we were talking about the past. Now we're talking about what's happening now. Some politicians are saying that 
in order to so in order to means now here we have probably a goal in order to cause another similarly sized increase in exports so now we want another similar increase in exports okay this is basically the uh the goal the government should allow the pundra to become weak so this is here the plan okay what is the plan allow deliberately allow the pundra to become weak again all right and so uh, so this is a plan and a goal have been provided so in the, in the entire paragraph the first half is talking about what happened twice in past and the last sentence is presenting a plan and a goal now what are we supposed to do that is not given to us in the um, stimulus so we should read the question stem to understand that okay which of the following if true provides the government with the strongest grounds to doubt okay doubt means we got we are looking at weakening a scenario to doubt that the politicians recommendation if followed will achieve its aim so in other words what we are saying is a uh, politicians recommendation will not achieve its aim we've got to come up with a choice which will show that the politicians recommendation will not be successful that means the plan will not be successful so let's see let's round it up the conclusion here is in order to cause another similarly sized increase in exports the government should allow the pundra to become weak again twice in the history pundra weak pundra led to high exports that's based on that and what is the scope of the argument like what kind of answer choice are we looking for scope of the argument means what kind of answer choice so even if you are not able to prethink you can think like this so we are looking for any new piece of information that shows that weakening the pundra will not cause another similar sized increase in exports right how many of you all really uh, uh, you know uh, how many of you all really i mean i'm just going to put up a poll so give me a moment let me ask you the question then answer it don't answer right away how many of you all had this clarity this much clarity in understanding this stimulus how many of you all honestly had this type of clarity absolutely and be honest about it because if you don't have the clarity you will know where you're going wrong it is very important to ident identify where you're going wrong then only you will be able to rectify that error area okay so be honest about it for me it's like i want to see uh, what kind of you know for me it's important for me to see how my students or in which area or in which line my students are really going wrong so that's interesting because 70% of you say you had the same clarity but there are uh, 28 29 30% of you who say you did not have the exact clarity so for all of you guys read the stimulus carefully spend time on it so that even if you're not able to prethink you will be able to choose the correct answer choice because you will be able to eliminate the other answer choices okay so clarity of the stimulus step 1 step 2 we are going to apply the uh the framework okay so get ready guys uh so let's see uh lavesh is saying maybe the exports boost ups due to some other factor than weak currency good lavesh that's a good way of thinking uh so basically you are saying that weak currency was not a reason in the past all right but then the weak currency whether it will not be a reason in the current time that is not proved by that right we've got to attack the execution says ryan good good all right let's see how the framework works okay all right so the exact plan and goal plan is to weaken the pundra again okay that's the recommendation or the plan the goal is to cause another similarly sized increase in export not just to cause an increase in export but a similarly sized okay now we've got to follow the three guidelines what's the first guideline what happened during the planning stage all right now here 
we don't have any information about uh, uh, the you know what was planned earlier okay uh, we only know that currently when politicians are talking about using the same strategy they are thinking what happened in the past will happen again now that is what they have planned okay again follow follow the thought nothing is given to you about the planning in the past right nothing is given why that plan was made so you might think how do we think about what happened during the planning stage well think about what is happening now what is happening now when the politicians are recommending now when the politicians are recommending what are they thinking well they are thinking that what happened twice you know in the past will happen again is this clear to all of you so uh, earlier some of you were telling me you were not able to implement the plan okay so vishnu uh, is it clear are you able to uh, rita vishnu are you able to see how we came up with this assumption rita vishnu so uh, hima i'm going to come back to your question yes manisha says recommendation is based on past experience absolutely okay so i had some good choices here some good pre thinking here uh, madhukar says international trade laws have changed so things have changed good madhukar that means this is kind of going against what the politicians are assuming very good very good uh, arpit says we can't attack the premise yes arpit we cannot say uh, whatever happened in the past did not happen okay um very good manisha says recommendation is based on past experience hima says what if during the execution some other country's currency value falls below punta uh well yes so conditions change what if so all these options that you guys are stating is basically offshoots of the first uh, guideline that politicians are assuming that everything will stay same currency of other countries will stay same um you know uh, all trade laws will remain same uh, we are talking about all, all other things so uh, vishnu says yes ritab says yes great author assumes that the conditions now should be the same as in 5 years ago absolutely so i'm so happy that so you can see gradually when you start putting the framework into place you will find it useful you will be able to think along those lines let's now move back to the framework what happened during the execution stage okay now uh we were able to increase the exports in the past so that means uh darfur must have been able to increase its production also if you want to export more that is given to us more was exported in the past it means it stands to reason that darfur's products uh, darfur must be producing enough to export right so that is something that you can infer that darfur was producing enough to increase its exports now when you are talking about carrying out the plan what if the manufacturing industries of darfur cannot produce enough to achieve the same increase in exports what happens then then the making the punra week again will not really help us to increase the exports in a similar manner right can you see this guys can you see how we have come up with uh, a a kind of uh, weakener all right by thinking what will happen when what will happen this time what can go wrong this time last time uh, darfur was able to increase the exports which means it must have been able to um, you know produce that much but currently whether uh, uh you know the manufacturing industries can produce the same amount to up the amount by uh, uh, you know similar increase we don't know okay it's quite possible that the manufacturing industries cannot produce more all right cannot produce to match up the past great all of you all have said yes so see that does help finally what is the connection between the plan and the goal guys okay the connection what other connection can you think of between the plan and the goal yes any one of you anything else any other connection that you could think of between the plan and the goal 
something that would weaken the plan or something that is required for the plan to work. The goal is to achieve a similar size increase in export. When you're exporting, what does it mean? You're selling to other countries. I think somebody did say earlier. So Latif says conditions are same along the same lines. Okay. Yes. What has to be, what has to take place if Pundra has to export more? Sorry, if uh, Darfir has to export more. I can only export more if there are what? Good. Madhukar says world economy will stay strong. So in other words, what you're saying is there should be buyers. Very good, Aman. There are orders. You have orders for the goods. You have demand for those goods. Okay. So Sai says only weak Pundra helps to increase the exports. Um, uh, Okay, so no other things are required. All right. Madhukar says, will there be demand? Good. Very good. I was thinking along those same lines. There should be enough space in the market. In other words, Govindam, what you mean is there should be de enough demand uh, for Darfir's goods to fit in. Trikun says, if the units produced go up, but the cost of production is low, worth they eventually lose money. A weaker currency would cause inflation, wouldn't it? Or is this a wrong assumption to make out of scope? Uh, well, the point here is what will happen because of the weaker currency within the country is not relevant because we're not talking about increasing income. We're just talking about increasing exports. So the income through the exports should increase in that sense, Vikunj. All right. Okay. So even if costs go up, that's not the concern of the argument. The concern is that there should be a similar sized increase. That is the goal. Okay. Um, so, Shivani, increase in exports helps in economic growth. Again, the idea here is the goal is not really to achieve economic growth, although, if you are exporting more in a way, it might contribute to that. But the specific goal is not to achieve economic growth, but to achieve similarly sized increase in exports. Okay. Sambit says demand, good. Uh, Shivani says increase in GDP of country, more employment. Well, again, Shivani, you can see that that is going in the slightly wrong direction. We are looking to find an answer choice which will say that there won't be any increase in exports. Okay. Uh, so Nandi says manufacturing capacity should be high. Absolutely, Nandi. Manufacturing that we have already covered in the second guideline. Uh, Winnie says no other country has lower prices than Darfur. Which, in other words, Vinny, you mean is there should be demand for Darfur's products. Absolutely. Okay, great. So, Madhukar, there are cheaper suppliers now in the market. Well, yes. That, in other words, Madhukar has put it very nicely. There are cheaper suppliers now in the market means there isn't that much of demand for Darfur's products. Good. Good, good, good. So, Trikunj, uh, no Trikunj, it's okay. One needs to train oneself to think along the same level. So I'm happy that you're still thinking in all those levels. Gradually, you train your mind to think exactly to the point. Okay, great. All right. So wonderful. So you guys have given the answer for this last bit. There should be similar demand for Darfur's exports. Now, see, just thinking along those three lines, you could come up with those three kind of things. And then these are just blanket statements. There could be a lot of offshoots because it's a weakener. All right. But if you're able to think along these lines, when you come across the right choice, you will be able to identify which one works and which one does not work. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to bring up the poll again, guys. Okay, there is a Manisha is asking, can we assume tax levied on exports will be high? Then exports won't be that high. Well, Manisha, anything that shows that the exports won't be that high. Okay, but uh, there is a small problem here, Manisha. We are not probably just talking about the export value. They're talking about similar sized increase in export. So probably we're talking about increase in volume. All right. So perhaps, uh, you know, uh, even if the taxes levied are high, then also the exports might go up. So you have to think about it a little deeper. Uh, Hima says, if the answer choice states, every seven years, exports of the products manufactured by Darfur is high. Will this weaken the plan? Uh, so I did not quite get this. Every seven years, exports of the products manufactured by Darfur is high. 
uh well in that case even if you make the pundra week the 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 products the exports will be high right so the recommendation would still work perhaps even though not because of the same cause okay govindam says if suppose similar size phase wasn't there in the question uh well then we would have to think about increase in terms of uh, value as well govindam all right so value of exports then probably the price factor uh that the uh, darfi products are going to fetch in the world market has to come into play more of more come into play all right okay so now i'm going to bring up the poll again guys earlier uh earlier 40% of you went with, with b uh, then there was a small percentage which went for c and d and then 34% of you went with e so i'm going to bring up the poll again if you want you can change your answer choices and we are going to compare all right so there is the poll for you go ahead take your time to mark it if you want you can change your answer choices in the face of uh, the current understanding you can use the current understanding to eliminate some of the choices that you were not able to eliminate earlier uh okay hima wants to see the answer choices again just give me a moment i'm definitely going to bring in the answer choices again uh, just a moment guys okay there are the answer choices take your time evaluate each option against the understanding that you have now and then plot your answers okay welcome hima so remember you are looking for a choice which is going to tell you that even if you weaken the pundra darfir will not be able to sell more manufactured products abroad okay let me repeat you are looking for a choice that tells you that even by weakening the pundra darfir will not be able to sell more in the world market uh, more of its manufactured products in the world market okay see with choice tells you that i'm going to give you 30 seconds more do that go ahead okay madhukar good so samit has asked a question what takes what it what does it take to answer 700 plus level cr questions flawlessly samit i would say that a very good understanding of the stimulus to be very frank even when i encounter some very difficult questions okay sometimes i find it difficult to justify the correct answer but because i have a very good understanding of the stimulus i am able to eliminate the incorrect four options and then whatever is left is got to be the answer so you've got to be that confident somebody practice analyzing the stimulus that is one of the things that we emphasize in our private tutoring sessions even in our uh, you know uh, the video lessons the teaching platform we emphasize on how to analyze the stimulus in the best manner 
absolutely govindam understanding of the question stem and stimulus is very very important thank you all right let me take a look at the polls so there has been a slight shift 56% of you have now opted so that there's still a change i'm going to end the poll guys just stabilize okay i'm just going to end the poll all right so th there has been a slight shift about 54% of you as compared to 40% earlier have shifted to b and 30% of you still go with e compared to 34% earlier all right you're welcome sambit so let's see it's a fight it's a it's a kind of uh, competition really between uh, b and e it seems okay so here we go we just a minute let me just uh, we would already discussed all this so let me now go to the answer choice elimination stage that step three several of the politicians now recommending that the pundra be allowed to become weak made that same recommendation so what this choice is really saying is the politicians who are now recommending they are the same politicians okay politicians now recommending that this 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 be done okay made that same recommendation before does it matter who made the recommendation it doesn't right this choice in short means the politicians making the recommendation now are the same ones as before okay they made the same recommendation all right who is making the recommendation is immaterial what we needed what we needed was to tell us that the the all the other conditions are the same so a very small percentage of you marked a guys in the second uh, go can you see this choice is not saying that all the conditions are same okay this choice is not saying all conditions same had it been saying that it would probably have been a weak, uh, a strengthener even then this is saying that the politicians are the same so this choice is totally irrelevant okay choice b after several decades of operating well below peak capacity that means when you say several decades of operating well below peak capacity it means in the last at least 20 years when you say several decades it has to be more than one decade so in at least last 20 years production capacity was lower than peak that means darfir if it wanted to increase it could increase its production but now darfur's manufacturing sector is operating at near peak levels almost maximum capacity okay near peak uh, is literally to be taken as almost peak so earlier darfur sector had the scope to increase output when the pundra was weak 12 years back 5 years back darfur's manufacturing sector uh, could increase its production output because at that point of time it was not producing as much as it was uh, capable of producing okay but now it, if it is already operating at almost full capacity then even if it wants to export more it cannot increase its output let's say my factory size is uh, made to only produce 1000 quintals per month i cannot push it to do more so if i want to push if i want to export more i cannot push it to produce more all right even if you make the pundra so this choice says that even if pundra is made weak exports may not see a similarly sized increase because darfur may not be able to produce enough to export okay and therefore b is the correct choice now look at it for a moment all right look at it for a moment now i am going to ask those of you who did not choose b those of you who did not opt for b are you clear why b is the answer are you clear why b is the correct answer
so ryan says output is in the scope now exports are the scope yes that's the whole point when you want to export more first you have to produce more if you cannot produce more how will you export more so let's not say uh, let's not bring the proportional increase similar sized increase means size size of increase size of exports implies what the volume most likely okay and even if it is in terms of value let's still talk about production and remember this is a weakener this is not an assumption question all right okay so milan and james i did not understand the no is for what are you clear about b or are you not clear about b sandy is saying when it is able to meet the demand when producing below par then now when it is producing at the near peak levels then why can't it meet sandy it is quite possible that the demand for the manufactured products has gone up uh, in the domestic market all right although it is producing more it is quite possible that it is also consuming more therefore in order to export more perhaps it may not be able to push its production all right sandy so milan and james yes uh, is it clear to you guys why b is not the answer or if you want i can explain once again i will come to c debo ji uh, i will definitely explain c but right now uh, i just want you guys to tell me whether you are clear with b or not ryan is saying you can have low exports but high inventory level so in this case you don't need to increase so you have to understand ryan inventory level can be high for a particular point of time but not continuously okay vini i'm going to explain b once more all right manisha b c uh let's say uh let's just take for hypothetically let's believe that darfir in the past so 12 years ago or 5 years ago darfir uh darfir had some let's say the capacity to produce 2000 quintals of rice okay let's say for example its maximum capacity was to produce 2000 units of products all right so prachi i will also come to d i'll come to d let me explain b again because this is important i want all of you to understand where you went wrong hmm? per b if you look at the first portion of b after several decades of operating well below peak capacity what does this mean that in the past if darfir's manufacturing capacity was let's say 2000 uh, 200000 units it was producing well below that so let's say it was just producing uh, 100 100000 units all right and when at that point of time pundra became peak darfir was able to produce more it was able to produce more in order to export more because it still had that maximum capacity which it it was not utilizing clear first understand this in the past it had the machinery it had the uh, let's say infrastructure to produce more but it was not producing that much so in the past when the pundra was made we darfir increased its production and was able to export a lot okay now in choice b the second portion is telling you that currently darfur's manufacturing sector is operating at near peak levels okay now let's say darfur uh, darfur's manufacturing sector is producing let's say about um, 175 uh, 100 175 100 units okay or 180 100 units or nearly you know just just short of some 10000 units in that case okay in that case darfur cannot really increase its uh, production to match up with the past exports all right and that is why this choice says even if you weaken the pundra if darfur cannot increase its manufacturing perhaps perhaps it cannot increase its exports can you understand this guys now let me just reset the poll okay is it clear now choice b i'm just talking about choice b everything else i'm going to explain but first understand choice b is it clear now we're talking about a scenario where 
star fir cannot really produce more to export more okay all right so let me look at some of your questions uh, i'm i'm going to come to d prachi all right i'm just going to come to d um, so puja is asking what basically we are looking at the answer choices in the plan question if you are weakening the outcome of the plan you are looking for an answer choice which will show you that uh, the goal cannot be achieved okay puja you are looking for an answer choice that tells you the goal cannot be achieved so in this case the goal is to increase the exports similar sized exports you want an increase and choice b tells you that you cannot increase the exports because you cannot manufacture govindam says if it was a cause and effect question e would have been the right choice uh, uh yes i think so well i'll come to that govindam i'm, I'm kind of uh, right now involved with choice b aman says darpur is catering to more domestic demands now than before and hence its exports capacity cannot be increased yes absolutely possible okay manisha thank you you've got it madhukar says there is no product left to export pricing doesn't matter if there is no product absolutely okay puja great so now it seems most of you are clear with that okay simple equation is i cannot export more because i cannot export more uh, produce more i cannot sell more if i cannot produce more okay so let's move to the other choices we've still got to cover the other framework choice c the economy of a country okay experiencing a rise in exports now we are talking about a country which is already experiencing a rise is darpur experiencing a rise right now no okay already experiencing is darpur already experiencing ask yourself no okay will become healthier only if the current country's currency is strong now this is actually talking about a totally different uh, 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 you know idea third this is saying the economy of a country which is already going through an increase in exports will become healthier only when the country's currency is strong so this is talking about strengthening the currency all right and therefore this is completely out of scope health of the country's economy is not the question it is not we don't have to understand the economy of a country will become healthy only when the currency is strong are we concerned with economy of a country becoming healthy guys so i think one of you did ask me about choice c is choice c clear guys let me see um So Prachi has asked. I had asked about D. Uh, Debojit, is C clear to you now? Yes, Debojit, is C clear to you now? I hope C is clear to you now. Okay, let's move to the choice D. Those countries whose manufactured products compete with Darfur, okay, on the world market, all currently have stable currencies. this actually strengthens the plan isn't it if you really look at this choice it is kind of telling you that if you weaken the pundra now high chances that darfur's products will be a good bargain so this is a strengthener and that is why it's not the answer so i think uh uh okay you're welcome debojit i think uh, who asked me about d All right, Prachi. Is D clear to you? If the other countries remain stable, and if you are weakening Pundra per the passage, weakening the value makes your products a good bargain, right? Prachi, is that clear? D is a strengthener. Okay, it kinds of says that okay, right now it's a good time to. Uh, so Rita wants me to repeat D. See, D is saying. those countries whose products compete with darfur they have stable currencies if they have stable currencies and darfur's currency is weak so darfur's products are going to be cheaper if darfur's products are going to be cheaper then other countries which buy products 
from Darfur and the, the some other competing countries, they would likely probably buy more of Darfur's products. So we are indirectly saying that Darfur's products will be in demand. That is why this choice is not really a weakener. Is that clear, Rita? Okay, Prachi, great. Let's move to choice E, which was the most popular choice after choice B. A sharp improvement in the efficiency of Darfur's manufacturing plants. So you are suggesting a plan here. Plan B. This is plan B. Improvement in the efficiency of Darfur's manufacturing plants would make Darfur's products a bargain. So this is the outcome of the plan. This is goal G O A L, sorry, goal B. So here we are talking about another plan. Are we talking about the plan related to weakening the Pundra price? Are we talking about a plan to weaken the Pundra? Just because some other plan will work, does it automatically weaken that plan A won't work? This choice says, if you improve the efficiency of Darfur's manufacturing plants, Darfur's products uh, will become a bargain on the world market. Even without any weakening, without any weakening means you don't need to weaken the Pundra. Does that mean weakening the Pundra will not work? Answer this question, guys. Let me just ask you a poll. Let me bring up a poll, okay? Let me ask you the question. Just because you are saying some other plan is there, does it mean you are automatically weakening the current plan? Are you automatically weakening the current plan by suggesting an alternative plan? This is not a cause and effect question. Yes. Are you automatically weakening the current plan? No. That is why. So, okay. In GMAT, now pay close attention because a lot of you have marked yes. No. Okay. In GMAT CR, if you are supposed to, let's say, weaken plan A. Okay. You cannot weaken plan A by saying there is plan B, which is also going to work. Okay. You cannot weaken plan A by suggesting plan B. Please file that away. All right. Is this clear to you? Let me reset the poll and ask you. Is it clear to you? You cannot weaken plan A by introducing plan B in a plan goal question. Is it clear? Yes, Prachi, it is suggesting an alternative. Is it clear? Hi, Pratibha. Yes, guys, is it clear? You cannot weaken. So, please listen to my question carefully first. I think you cannot weaken plan A by suggesting another plan B. All right, clear? Have you understood this? You cannot weaken plan A by suggesting plan B. Are you clear on this? Okay, Pratibha. So Pratibha, I think you've just joined us. Um, it's very simple. If I am asking you to weaken plan A, that is to say that plan A won't work, you cannot bring a plan B and say plan B works. Just because plan B works does not mean plan A does not work. So for weakening plan A, you have to actively prove that plan A doesn't work. Um, so, so Christian, please <clears throat> understand. <clears throat> if plan B said that the result would be achieved with a more size increase in exports, that would be a correct answer. Point is not that, Christian. Point is you have to prove actively that weakening the Pundra will not work. So plan B could be anything. All right, plan B could be anything. But I want to show that weakening the Pundra, which is my plan A, that won't work. All right, therefore, introducing an alternative plan does not automatically cancel out the first plan. All right, Christian, I hope that is clear to you. This is one of the classic traps of GMAT plan goal questions. Introduce an alternate plan to show that the original plan is not required. So that is not weakening the original plan. Weakening the original plan means that original plan won't work. 
Um, so Pratiba, yes, you can get the recording of the webinar. Uh, you can see the link to the webinar series is pinned at the top of the chat box. You can uh, access all our recordings of the webinars uh, on that uh, link. Okay, so you will be able to see that. All right, guys, so I think that's clear with this question. Uh, let's now look at our next framework. So choice B, if you look at choice B, we applied that what happens during the execution stage. In the execution stage, Darfir is not able to increase its production, okay? <clears throat> uh, Christian, again, even if you show that plan B is better, see, plan B could be better. Does it mean plan A won't work? All right. So better plan does not mean that the original plan doesn't work. No, that would still not be a week. No. All right, Christian. And there are ample questions like these. This is just one sample that an alternate plan is introduced to show you that you don't need the original plan. Okay. And that doesn't automatically say the original plan is, uh, uh, you know, not good. All right, guys. So let me now quickly move to our... Uh, the next thing that we will be discussing is the framework for causal arguments. Now, very briefly, I'm going to talk about what is causality, guys. In GMAT CR, uh, pay close attention. You can ask me your questions later on. Uh, the stimulus often contains a cause and effect relationship. And such a relationship clearly states that a certain event A causes event B. Thus, event A uh, is the cause and event B is the effect of that cause, all right? Uh, let's say, for example, in the conclusion, you have a statement like this. The unusually low amount of rainfall this year caused or led to or resulted in low production of corn. Here, event A is the cause, that is uh, unusually low amount of rainfall this year. And the cause that is the cause, it has caused low production of corn, that is event B. This kind of relationship in the conclusion, this kind of cause and effect relationship in the conclusion makes an argument a causal argument. Once again, I'll repeat, only when you have a cause and effect relationship in the conclusion, you can call it a causal argument. Okay. If there is a cause and effect relationship only in the premise, it does not become a causal argument. So uh, we have a lot of articles on causal arguments if you care to look it up in our blog, all right? Right now, what we'll need to do is quickly establish what are the basic assumptions made in a causal argument. Pay close attention. Like all CR arguments, a causal argument also contains certain assumptions. But the good thing about this is that these assumptions are same for all causal arguments, okay? So in other PR uh, questions you have different assumptions but in a causal argument the assumptions are all same okay um, so let's see uh, what are these assumptions okay uh, let's take an example now let's read this example the number of vehicles being driven on the roads so we are talking about number of vehicles okay has increased in the last one year all right Along with an increase, so another thing has increased, there has been an increase in air pollution levels. So two things have increased, all right, sorry, I'm so sorry, two things have increased, hold on a second, what is going wrong guys, one minute, two things have increased, right, all right. One is the number of vehicles and the other is increase in air pollution level. Now, if you see, okay, uh, what is given here is the two things happened at the same time. Sorry for this, okay. But the author in the conclusion draws a cause-effect relationship. In the sentence, nothing is given to you that uh, number of vehicles increased first or the pollution levels increase first. It is just given that these two things increased along, along with, okay? You have been given along with. So we don't really know what happened first. But the author is concluding exhaust from the vehicles must have led to the increase in pollution levels. That means increase in the number of vehicles caused an increase in the exhaust. 
and that led to an increase in the air pollution. So this is, uh, uh, here the author is assuming very clearly some things and we'll talk about that. So this kind of conclusion is a causal argument. The author draws a cause and effect relationship in the conclusion, okay? All right. So let's see what are the assumptions the author makes while uh, the author is making, uh, drawing a causal relationship in the conclusion. Let's see. Okay. Assumption one. The author is assuming that event A must have happened before event B, right? That's not given in the argument. So this is an assumption. If event A did not take place before event B, then we cannot draw a causal relationship. Therefore, there is an assumption that event A must have happened before event B. All right. Second assumption, nothing other than event A caused event B. Okay. In other words, there is no alternate cause. Now, this is the core assumption. If there was some other cause, then the author cannot draw the conclusion, right? So, that is assumption two. If the increase in pollution levels did not take place because of, uh, uh, you know, the increase in the exhaust, then this conclusion won't stand. So, increase in pollution levels did not take place because of any reason other than the increase in the number of vehicles and the exhaust from those vehicles. Finally, there is no reverse causality. Assumption 3 is, a, is in a way linked to assumption 1. Okay. There is no reverse causality. That is the effect did not cause the cause. That means increase in the air pollution levels did not lead to an increase in the number of vehicles and therefore an increase in the amount of exhaust. All right. So these are the three assumptions, basic assumptions behind all causal arguments. All causal arguments are based on these three assumptions that the cause happened before the effect, there was no other cause responsible for the effect, and the effect did not cause the cause. Are you guys all clear with this? Are you clear with all this or these three assumptions, guys? Let me bring up the poll. Let me just reset the poll. Are you clear about these three core assumptions? Okay, let me. Okay, Vinny, uh, you still don't understand the connection between plan and goal. So connection between plan and goal will always be about what is required for the goal to take place. Simply put, what is required for Darfield to sell more products in the world market? More demand. So it is not necessary that you think along all three lines. You can think along one line. You can think along two lines. Totally depends on how much time you're taking to understand the stimulus. So uh, Manisha, I will share the link once again in this chat, of course. Just give me, it's it's pinned to the uh, chat if you just go up. But I'll, I'll give it to you again. Uh, so Pratiba, about the WhatsApp group, I'll give you the WhatsApp number at the end of this uh, uh, webinar. You can connect with us. But let's see if we can make a WhatsApp group. All right. Uh, okay. I'll just repeat the assumptions, Manisha. Uh, I'll make a note of that, Pratibha. Okay. I'm just going to go through these assumptions once again. So for those of you who did not understand it, let me recap. Now see, when the author says that event A caused event B, okay, if you remember the question, nowhere is it given, okay, nowhere is it given that the number of vehicles being driven on the roads increased first and the increase in the pollution levels took place next. It's not given. If it is not given and yet the author is saying that event A caused event B, then the author is assuming that event A had to happen first. I mean, the cause has to take place first, okay? So, the basic assumption behind any causal argument is that the cause took place first and then only the effect took place. Now, if you look at assumption 3, Govindam, assumption 3 is along the lines of assumption 1. If event A took place first and then event B, then you are assuming that event B did not cause event A, right? There is no reverse causality. Can you see that, Govindam? Assumption 1 and assumption 3 is actually two sides of the same coin. 
if event a took place first then event b took place then we cannot say that event b caused event a right can you see that govindam is assumption 3 clear manisha are you clear manisha and govindam are you clear about the causality then we are going to move forward okay great all right so these are the three basic assumptions and you can use these in any question guys any question whatsoever so i'm going to bring up the question next okay but before that the framework so a causal argument is one and you can copy down the framework in which the conclusion contains a cause and effect relationship so the core assumption is there is no other cause which is responsible for the stated effect apart from those other two assumptions your framework will be first you identify the causality so for the sake of convenience you can call your cause x and you can call your effect y okay guideline one is x happened before y which means there is no other sequence or relationship or correlation between x and y there is no other correlation except that x happened before y for example it is not a coincidence that the two things are happening it is not that there is some other third cause you know uh, some other cause let's say there is z which is causing x and it is causing y there is no common cause okay guideline 2 no alternate cause that is uh, nothing else caused the effect if there were any other cause possible the author cannot conclude that x is the cause of y and finally no reverse causality that is y did not cause x so if any of these three uh, you are able to bring up that is the assumption behind a causal argument are you guys clear the framework let me bring up the poll um are you guys clear about the framework absolutely so arpit uh, we cannot call something a cause if there is no effect so if you are saying something is a cause it means automatically you are calling it a cause because there is some effect okay great let me bring up the question guys this is again a 700 plus level question all right and this is our own in house production tmat quiz question i hope you enjoy it so go ahead i'm going to give you time to apply the framework apply the three assumptions okay and eliminate the choices based on the application of those three assumptions so go ahead okay i can see a lot of confusion going by your uh, polls guys so here is what i am going to suggest uh i would suggest really read the stimulus carefully most of the time we go wrong in our pre thinking because we are not thinking things through all right so i'll give another um uh, just a minute for all of you to go over the entire thing and then i'm going to discuss this question show you how it should be done so that you are not as confused as you are there it seems to be almost kind of you know uh, almost equal division at least for three of the options that i can see so just take another 30 30 to 40 seconds all right
All right, I'm going to end the poll, guys. Okay, five, four, three, two, and one. Now, in my experience, I've seen you know uh, causal questions uh, form a good chunk of. I mean, at least about twenty percent of the times you would come across a causal question in those. So if you're getting about 12 uh, CR questions, you can be sure you'll get at least one, um, even two causal questions, perhaps. Yeah, two around. Okay, so at least two questions. Yes, you can. So what I can see from the polls is 34% of you mark A, 8% B, 8% C, 26% D, and 21% E. All right, guys. Tell me, how did you like the question? How did you like the question in terms of how did you find it? This is the kind of levels um, we, we make sure that we follow the GMAT pattern very closely. We make sure our questions test you for the right things that GMAT tests. So how did you like the questions? Uh, question, Pratibha says it was effective. All right, Pratibha. Uh, when you found it challenging, great. Madhukar found it confusing. Well, I don't know how to read into that. The question was confusing or the question was uh, like it was as confusing as the GMAT questions. Sarpit says he was confused between A and D. Christian, uh, Christian says it's more of a plan goal. Well, Christian, uh, you were not present at the beginning. So there I did put in this uh, disclaimer that sometimes you get a question which is a mixture of a plan goal and a cause effect. And you're right. You're absolutely right. Uh, there is a plan goal element to it, but there is also a cause effect. So I'm going to show you that. Madhukar says the cause effect relationship was difficult to establish. Okay, so you know, Madhukar, why that happened was because perhaps the way you should read the stimulus did not take place. There, and there is no, uh, you know, embarrassment in admitting that. A lot of us don't do that. So Latif found the question. Good one. Aman found it challenging. Nandi found it challenging, but interesting. So that's nice. That's that's good to hear. Now I'm going to. I want all of you guys to really sit up because in this question, I am definitely going to apply the, uh, uh, the framework, but more importantly, I'm going to show that how you should analyze this question. That's a very, very important step. So please follow closely. Okay, here it goes. First step is to analyze the stimulus. So how are we going to do that? We are going to read one sentence at a time and analyze one sentence at a time. 50 years ago, crocodiles were brought to the waters of Fauna County. Now, what does this premise tell us? This premise provides a factual piece of information. It tells us that crocodiles did not earlier exist in Fauna County and they were brought to the county only half a century ago. You might not found it, find this useful right now, but who knows when you are finished reading the question for your question, sorry, stimulus, this might be important. So you write from the beginning, you tell yourself every piece of information is important. It tells us that the crocodiles were not native to the waters of Fauna County. Okay, they were not native. Okay, let's read the next sentence. Excessive predation by the huge crocodile population. If you look at this small, this small phrase, you know, it tells us two things. Okay, there was a huge a huge crocodile population exists now. Okay, 50 years ago it was not there, but now there is a huge crocodile population, huge number of crocodiles are there, and they are hunting a lot, excessive predation. Okay, so this excessive hunting by the huge number of crocodiles now threatens the mena fish. Okay, so the mena fish probably also lives in the water. The only source of omega 3, so this mena fish is the only source of omega 3. And this omega-3 is an essential fatty acid for the fauna people. And a lot of things here. This premise presents the current situation. What is the current situation? Crocodiles are now found in huge numbers. They are hunting excessively. They are eating the mena fish in huge numbers. Thus, they pose a danger to the mena population. The mena is the only source of omega-3 for the locals. So we can draw an inference that the locals are probably facing a shortage in their only supply of omega-3. Okay, so I'm going to ask all of you, 
are you guys analyzing the stimulus this way because if you're not if you are not then you're in for trouble and be honest are you analyzing it this way are you really reading it this thoroughly okay 100% of you are saying yes so in that case there should not be the confusion which is there let's move ahead good if you are reading it like this very good next sentence the county officials plan now here we have a plan what are they planning they are planning to reduce the crocodile population okay so probably they do they want to take away the threat from mena fish you know mena fish is so important for their omega 3 so the the officials of county fauna are planning to reduce the crocodile population how by introducing the runa fish okay so the goal is to reduce the crocodile population and uh, uh, the plan is to introduce another fish runa which contains a chemical highly poisonous to crocodiles but harmless for humans okay all right so again what does this sentence tell us the county officials want to bring down the number of crocodiles in the county waters for that they have a plan and the plan is to introduce the runa fish which is poisonous for crocodiles okay we are also told that the runa is not poisonous to humans that's important to remember remember uh, the runa will be introduced in the waters where the mena fish also live so if the runa fish are poisonous to humans then they, the the mena fish might also be poisoned okay let's read on however okay so however there presents a contrast and you've got to remember that however there is a possibility the runa will harm the small native lizards that live in the water so the benefit of runa fish is given that it is going to kill the crocodiles but a side effect we can say it's a side effect uh, is that the runa will harm the small native lizards it's possible so there is a drawback to that plan it might cause harm to the small native lizards in the county waters apart from killing the crocodiles okay fine so what else do we have now clearly the however is a contrast let's read on beyond that uh the officials plan therefore therefore we know is a conclusion marker most of the time may be good for the county people so one part of the outcome of the plan could be good it could be good for the county people but will obviously increase the threat to the native aquatic life okay so increase the threat to native aquatic life that means the another outcome of the plan will be that there will be more threat to the native aquatic life and what is the native aquatic life we know of there is the small native lizard and then there is the mena fish but clearly if it will be good for the county people it means we can infer that the mena fish will not be harmed right if it may be good for the county people we can infer that the mena fish will not be harmed so what do we have here we have a conclusion and the conclusion is the plan may be good for county people but the plan will increase the danger to the native aquatic life now tell me guys what is the main um, the, the the main conclusion so the conclusion contains two parts the part before but and the part after but can you tell me which part is the main conclusion therefore is not a contrast pratibha therefore is always about a conclusion okay never about a contrast yes what is the main conclusion ryan says increase yes okay ryan let me hear from the others also what is the main plan because if you look at the conclusion uh, sorry what is the main conclusion because if you look at the conclusion there seems to be two parts to it good for the county people but dangerous for the native aquatic life good so all of you agree that it is the second half of the conclusion that is really the conclusion okay so uh hmm. now if you look at the conclusion carefully it contains a cause and two effects 
one good and the other bad how you might ask the cause is the plan to introduce runa that's the cause right and the cause will have two effects one effect will be good for the county people okay and the other effect is uh, so good how their omega 3 supply will no longer be threatened by crocodiles okay and effect two is the threat to native aquatic life such as the lizards will increase it will grow the th threat will grow okay clear so far here all right so here as established the main intention of the author is to state that the plan will increase the threat to the native aquatic life so in that sense the plan becomes the cause okay and the effect becomes increase in the threat to native aquatic life okay all right is that clear so some of you had asked me that uh, uh, christian christian is it clear to you how this is uh, definitely a part of it is the plan goal but the, we are not asking you to strengthen the plan or weaken the plan we are just telling you to state uh, uh, you know whether this will increase the danger or not okay we have to kind of uh, weaken that sorry i think we have to strengthen that right we have to weaken it we have to find the assumption sorry i'm so sorry great so main conclusion is threat to aquatic life will increase so far are we clear it seems we are clear all of us great now let's now that we have established that this is a plan, cause effect kind of question let's move to employing the framework the cause is the plan to introduce runa fish which is poisonous for crocodile okay the effect is that it will increase the threat to native aquatic life it will increase the threat understand the word increase is important it's not just saying that it will threaten threaten is already given to you in the passage itself that there is a possibility the runa will harm the native lizard but effect is like it will increase the threat and you have to look at the assumption behind this how is the author so sure that the threat will increase guideline 1 x happened before y it does not apply here because plan is not in action all right the plan has not been put into action so we can't say x happened before y let's look at guideline 2 no alternate cause can lead to the stated effect correct this is our guideline 2 which means we are saying that nothing else at present can cause an increase in the threat to the native aquatic life all of you can you see this can you understand this reasoning look at the the way we are applying guideline 2 all of you no alternate cause can lead to the stated effect means no other nothing else no other threat at present can cause an increase in the threat to the native aquatic life all of you just look at that and tell me whether you've understood how we have applied guideline 2 so far look at how we are applying guideline 2 and tell me if you are clear with it look at it for a moment please look at it for a moment and let me do let me know just so far i'm not asking you to think beyond this guideline 2 is there is no other cause behind the stated effect cause is the plan and effect is increase the threat so per guideline 2 we are saying nothing else will increase the threat nothing else will increase the threat i'm going to recast the poll and ask you again nothing else will increase the threat is that clear to all of you nothing else can cause an increase in the threat yes okay great it may take them some time for this to sink in so not a problem all right great i can see that all of you have understood now let's see how we can come up with an assumption if we are saying 
nothing else at present can cause an increase in the threat what we are saying is there is nothing else which is a bigger threat to the native aquatic life we are saying that nothing else is a bigger threat read this we are basically saying nothing else is a bigger threat to native aquatic life than the introduction of poisonous tuna isn't it i mean think about it like this what if the native aquatic life is currently facing a bigger threat than the one from runa okay uh, say for example the existing the crocodiles they are also eating the lizards so the crocodiles are a threat okay crocodiles are threat one and runa fish is threat two if the runa fish kills the crocodiles then one threat is going to be killed and the aquatic life will be benefited right okay then the introduction of the runa can actually save them from the bigger threat and that would break the conclusion isn't it that would break the conclusion so can all of you all see that the assumption nothing is a bigger threat to the native aquatic life not the crocodiles not anything else is an assumption can all of you see this i'm just going to ask you again take a moment look at it and then tell me are you clear with the explanation here bigger threat bigger threat govinda because we're talking about increase in threat okay we are talking about increase in threat so sai ask yourself okay is the author concerned how the people might be helped or is the author concerned how the aquatic life life might be harmed ask yourself what is the main point that the author is trying to make okay because the main clause after the but so guys are you clear with this great good so with that understanding that there is nothing else no other bigger threat at present the crocodiles are not uh, posing a bigger threat for the runa because if the crocodiles are a bigger threat uh, sorry the crocodiles are not a bigger threat for the lizard because if the crocodiles are a bigger threat then perhaps killing the crocodiles will be good for the native lizards okay all right so let's now move to the answer choice elimination there is no reverse causality that means the author is also assuming that the small lizards will not cause any significant harm to the runa fish all right it's only the other way around small lizards if they can harm the runa then the conclusion will break down then we can't say that introducing the runa is going to increase the threat to the native aquatic life all right so no reverse causality is also present so with those three we quickly move uh, to eliminating the answer choices okay we have two assumptions that nothing else poses a bigger threat uh, than the introduction of the runa fish and assumption to that the small lizards do not cause any significant harm to the runa fish now again a talks about an alternate plan the officials have not been able to come up with an alternative plan to reduce crocodile po population that will be completely safe for the native aquatic life does this have to be true even if the officials have not been able to come up with an alternative plan then also introducing this plan might increase the threat see it like looks like this if you negate this choice the officials have been able to come up with an alternative plan okay if they have been able to come up with an alternative plan then you are not talking about current plan as explained earlier alternate plan will not uh, either strengthen or weaken the current plan so a lot of you chose choice a okay even if the officials came up with a completely safe plan they decided to use the runa fish plan instead right so whether they were able to come up with an alternative plan or not able to come up 
is not the scope of the argument. Guys, a lot of you mark choice A as the correct answer. Are you clear why choice A is not the answer? Yes, Govindam, it's extra information or completely garbage. Uh, uh, so Govindam, Runa is not the bigger threat. It's the crocodiles is not the bigger threat actually. Okay, Runa is the bigger threat. Yes, Govindam, I am so sorry, my bad. So in a way you are saying Runa is the bigger threat, absolutely. Okay, uh, so as I was going to ask you guys, are you clear with why choice A is incorrect? All of you. This is a classic trap of GMAT questions. We have already seen it in the official question. Great, let's move to the next choice. Controlled experiments have proved the ability of the runa to bring down the crocodile population by a significant percentage. We already know this. Is it new information? We are already told that the runa contains highly poisonous chemicals. Okay, this in fact simply supports the success of the plan, but it is not a necessary condition. The plan might be successful even if there is no other experiment because the passage already tells us that it contains a chemical which is highly poisonous to crocodiles. Okay, so this is definitely not uh, your assumption. C, the runa fish often prey on the eggs of the small lizard. Here we are talking about the way in which runa can harm. But we already know that, see, there is a possibility that runa will harm is already given. So this choice only tells us uh, how that harm will be caused. In that sense, it's just a distortion of the given information, no new information, and therefore not the correct choice. So again, a lot of you chose choice C. Are you clear why choice C is not the answer? Yes, Pratibha, now you've got it. Good. Uh, so, see, remember Govindam, it doesn't tell us how uh, uh, the threat will be increased. It just tells us it's a threat. But the threat will be increased is not pointed out by choice uh, uh, C. So, uh, Vini, again, let me repeat, alternate plan, okay, alternate plan and alternate cause is a different thing altogether. Choice A, look at the wording of choice A, okay. We are looking for an assumption, something that must be true. That means you are saying, the uh, uh, the it must be true that the officials were not able to come up with any other plan okay so that's 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 not a must be true idea okay all right so i think uh, so let me reset uh, the question and ask you again are you clear with choice c guys all of you it just tells us that there is a threat it doesn't tell us whether there will be an increase in threat Okay, the increase part is not at all uh, given this. And again, this is not a must be true condition. So a lot of things pointing it out not to be the assumption. Crocodiles currently do not face the threat of hunting from any animals in the fauna county. So this choice is simply telling you that the crocodiles themselves are not being threatened by any other animal. Now let's try this. I mean, this somehow kind of, if it is, looking good enough to you, we'll just try the trial by negation technique. Negative choice says the crocodiles currently face the threat of predation from some animals in Pona County. Okay. If some land animal is preying on crocodiles, then what is happening is there is a reduction uh, in the, the food supply on the introduction of runa. Okay. So then the wildlife suffers. If some land animal is eating up the crocodiles, what happens is this, all right? What happens is this, that uh, uh, the, there is a reduction in their food supply on the introduction of runa. So if these land animals are eating crocodiles and if the runa is introduced, then the crocodiles will die. So the land animals will fall short of their food. And in that case, the wildlife will suffer. But so then there is no impact on the native life in the native uh, aquatic life if it is land animals. 
if the predators are aquatic animals then there will be a reduction of their food supply by killing crocodiles you know and then the aquatic life might suffer the native aquatic life so this plan has an ambiguous impact kind of and one portion there is no impact the other it is kind of strengthening the conclusion therefore this is not an assumption clearly not an assumption so i hope you are clear with choice d guys let me reset the poll look at it for a moment before you answer the question are you clear with choice d okay great and that brings us to choice c which i think by now everybody knows is the correct answer for the native lizard population excessive hunting by crocodiles is not the most significant threat you know if you negate this if you negate this then your conclusion will fall if currently crocodiles are the significant threat if they are the bigger threat then killing crocodiles will actually help the lizard population okay so we are eliminating that crocodiles are not the bigger or not the most significant threat okay crocodile is not the most significant threat so there is no alternate cause to increase the threat to native lizard population and therefore this is the correct choice yes guys is that clear to all of you let me see so madhukar so madhukar uh we are not sure about what kind of animals are going to predate on the crocodiles land animals if they predate and if crocodiles are killed then um, you know uh, uh, it will only harm the land animals not the aquatic animals so since there is no clarity in the answer choice we cannot say it's an assumption an assumption has to be very precise an assumption has to be watertight okay so saksham op option c is incorrect because option c okay uh is telling you just that harm might be caused it is not even talking about increase in the threat so a debojit okay i'll let me explain it one by one okay a is out of the picture number one it is pre presenting we have to identify the assumption behind the conclusion okay so here you are presenting an alternative plan an alternate plan is uh, uh, just not going to tell you that this plan uh, was formed because there was no other alternative plan so a is not the answer a doesn't have to be true okay it does not have to be true that uh, uh, the officials have not been able to come up with an alternate plan it is quite possible that they were able to come up with an alternate plan but they did not use that plan okay uh so ryan you are talking about which choice runa and crocs are both equal threats to the lizards okay so equal threats is not given most significant current threat so clearly there is a difference in the kind of threat that is produced so saksham are you clear about c debojit are you clear about a madhukar is it clear to you now are you guys clear with all the explanations now all of you you have to understand the problem the problem here is you are saying uh introducing runa is going to increase threat so i am choosing an option which says there is no other threat and that is why introducing runa is going to increase threat so it's okay uh, if you got so madhukar which part is confusing you govindam says option c is justifying the possibility yes okay so uh, in all the choices please remember this is an assumption question in assumption only those three assumptions work behind a causal argument so just think about like that the framework is there to make you think only in the correct direction okay is it an alternate cause or not is it an alternate threat or not if it is not it's out of the window okay okay ryan got that got that all right 
great so i think uh, what i can see from the polls is all of you all are clear with this now we have actually run short of time so what i'll do is there was another question uh, i have the pdf of this session okay i'm going to upload that pdf but just before that let me quickly give you the framework for so this was the framework for uh, causal questions in causals you often get uh, strengthening causal argument then you can use this framework and this is very important you know so the framework in the strengthener causal argument is built along the lines of the three assumptions there is no reverse relationship so you can look for y did not cause x no alternate cause means there is no z did not cause x uh, sorry z did not cause y no cause no effect so if there is no x no y if you have such a situation it also strengthens the causal argument if cause occurs then effect occurs so if x occurs then y occurs you know you can look at that i mean uh, if i were to really explain this let's look at this choice 1 is based on uh, assumption number 3 okay when we are saying that uh, a choice that shows that y could not have caused x will work as a strengthener all right no alternate cause means there is if there is any choice that eliminates an alternate cause it will automatically act as a strengthener no cause no effect means a choice that indicates uh, that in the absence of the cause the effect was also absent that will also act as a strengthener if x then y so if you have any choice that shows that whenever the cause occurs the effect also occurs you know parallel example and all that will strengthen the argument if any data is being used in the argument then if you provide any evidence that the data is accurate that will also strengthen the causal argument so uh, there is a question again as i said uh, kind of shortage on time guys so i'm going to upload the pdf session uh, right now i'm going to start sharing it uh, let me just share it so that you can download it okay and as uh, it's a it's a official question you can apply the causal uh, framework in that strengthening framework all right you can use all these five pointers for the strengthening uh, framework and use it for that causal argument so let me just share the pdf with you so i have started sharing uh, you go to the file section and you can download from there uh okay so madhukar wants to see the question all right madhukar i'll just bring up the question my pleasure there is a question for you right and uh so if you have any other queries uh okay guys there was there was one important thing i might just forget so there is this scholarship program that we run okay we run a scholarship program when i say scholarship program it's a very special very heavy discounts on the program all right uh, you wanted the links okay i'm just going to send the link to all of you hold on a sec so here is the link to the webinar series where you will find the recordings all right and uh, yeah so i was talking about the scholarship guys so we run a scholarship and i say scholarship it's a very very huge discount very very huge discount on our fees to students who have already taken the gmat and have scored 680 plus on that okay if you have scored 680 plus on the actual gmat uh, then if you want to take the gmat again if you want to take up our course we offer very heavy discounts on that any uh, you uh, any recommendations any sorry any questions you have are welcome now anything related to the discussion that we had today and uh, you can just uh, give your comments in the chat box if you found the session helpful i'm just going to bring up a poll shortly just give me a moment guys where you can kind of give me some great uh, feedback Okay, so I'm just uh, I'm just going to look at your comments in a moment. Just give me.
so that's the rating 10 is the highest okay and uh so govindam uh, for the so this is a webinar uh, stuff totally the pdf is based on whatever was discussed in the webinar so our students who are enrolled they can also avail of this link they can also always go through the webinar they are also welcome to attend the uh, uh, the webinars uh okay so let me just i hope mar you have got the link now Uh, so madhukar i am not so sure about the dummy gmats but you can definitely talk to piyush i'll i'll share piyush's number in a moment so let me just uh, move down to this and i'm going to share the number on which you guys can uh, just a moment let me it's going to take a while moment you can register for the uh, free trial uh, I, i'll just give you the link.